Hi, this is Dr. Andrew Chrysler. In this video, I'm going to be discussing the charge current continuity relationship. This relationship has applications that are seen in understanding displacement current and Kirchhoff's current law and more. So basically, we're going to be deriving this expression on the right hand side. So first, let's start with a cube and we'll say the cube has some volume V. OK, so we have a cube with a volume V and we say that the cube contains Q total amount of charge. So that cube is filled with little charge particles. Uh, the total amount is Q and it's contained in that volume V. Now, when you look at this, you can then say that that creates a charge density. So the Q per volume, that's a charge density, rho V. Now, each of the six sides on this cube create a total surface S, which encloses that volume V. Now we have a charge density rho V instead of that volume. And if some of those charges leave, that would be a current. And if it leaves through uh, some small square on the surface of that cube, then that is a current density. So if the charges, if there's charges leaving that cube, that's a conduction current leaving the cube. And the current could leave through anywhere on that total surface S to make that current density J. So we want to relate the charge density rho V inside of the cube with the current density J, knowing that Q is conserved. And that conservative property just means that the charges are neither being created nor destroyed, which is a, a fundamental uh, piece of knowledge that we studied earlier. So let's go back and now let's say, okay, we have some currents that they could go out of any side of this cube any side of this volume cube. And if we were to look at just one of those, uh, leaving out of some small surface, S1, we could say that a current I1 is equal to this closed surface integral, where we have a current density J1 leaving that surface S1, that would create I1. And if we had many currents leaving our volume V, we could call them J2, J3, and so on. Each one of those would make a current I. If we added all of those up, we'll call that total current. So some total current I is equal to all of these small currents, I1, 2, and 3, which are going out of various small bits of the total surface. And we could then write that as an integral saying that for the total surface where s this s is the total surface so every single side of this the bottom all of the uh, current densities leaving that total surface would be equal to some current i now as i leaves the cube that means that the total amount of q is changing with time and it's decreasing and we say then that dq dt negative is equal to i so as these Q's leave, and we have all these J's pointed out, so as those charges leave, the Q is changing with time, and we're saying that it's a negative because they're leaving. We've defined these J arrows as leaving that surface. So the total current that we just looked at, we would say is minus dQ dt. Now going back to another uh, early property we learned is that we could find the total amount of Q the total number of charges in a volume by doing a volume integral of the charge density inside of that volume. So if we were to take this integral, we would get the total Q. Therefore, we can substitute this Q with this integral. So now we have the current is equal to the, the um, derivative d dt of that integral, rho v. And then we also have another relationship for i that was this closed loop surface integral j dot ds. Now we have two expressions for i. One is about the uh, charge density. One is about the uh, current density. So we can set those equal to each other up here. We can set these two expressions for i equal to each other. And then if you recall from your mathematics courses, we have the divergence theorem, which relates volume integrals and surface integrals. We can see on the left hand side that this is a closed surface integral. And if we apply the divergence theorem to that left hand side, 
we can convert this to the divergence of that vector j. Now, we have applied the divergence theorem to the left-hand side to get this expression. And we should now note that the cube has volume v, and the volume doesn't change. The volume is constant. And if we do that, then we can move this ddt into a partial derivative, and we can move it from the outside of the integral into the inside of the integral. And that gives us this expression. And now we see that the divergence of j is equal to this partial derivative of the charge density. And both sides have this volume integral. So if we remove that, we get this final expression where the divergence of the current density is equal to the negative of the partial derivative of the charge density with respect to time. So this is the continuity equation. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.